Hello, my name is Vince Romo. I want to thank you for tuning in today. What this show is about, it's about barrio lifestyle. About being raised in the barrio, being from a barrio, the do's and the don'ts, the what's and the where's and the who's in the house. I want to thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Barrio Living. Thank you once again for tuning in on today's episode of Barrio Driven. I'm here with Popeye Ray, a second generation gang member from one of the oldest barrios in Puente, Barrio Basse Grande. Papa Ray, welcome to Barrio Driven and thank you for sitting here with us. Hey, thank you for having me, homie. If you want to give, uh, before we get started, if you want to give the audience uh, a small, quick introduction of yourself, that'd be great. Uh, well, uh my name's Ray Corona. I grew up in Bassett. Uh, I'm a professional boxing referee. Been a referee now going on 23 years. Do a little MMA as well, but mostly uh, boxing. And um, born again Christian now. I've been a Christian 15 years. And uh, all the glory to God, man. You know. That's right. That's right. You know what? Uh, God is a good God. You know. That's right. That's right. Um. Now. Being from Basta Grande, um, what, at what age did you decide that, hey, this is the life that you want, that you know what, who, who was it that you looked up to? You know, as, as you said, you were second generation. So was it your primos? Was it your uncle, your fito? Who was it that said, hey, I want to be like that person. I want to be, you know what, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Who was it that you looked up to? Well, um, growing up, uh, I don't have any blood brothers. But my mom and her sisters, we all lived in a house in Bassett. So I had a lot of cousins. So there was six of us and they were all from my neighborhood. So, you know, I just just followed their footsteps. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Their footsteps. Um, I had uh, uh, my brother, Junior, Victor, Marino, Dopey from Bassett Grande. And my brother, Gumby, Willie from Bassett Grande. And my canad, Peter from Bassett Grande. Another brother, Rummy, another brother, Manuel, and then then me. I'm the third one. And um, we all just, you know, grew up in the neighborhood and we all just, it, it was part of the thing, you know? Yeah. You either, back then, it was either your disco or your, your homie. And we, we, we took the homie route, you know? How, how old were you when you decided to, to take that route, Ray? Then? I was 12 years old. I got jumped into old. the barrio when I was. 12 years old. Wow, that's young. That's young, 12 yeah. years old. Like, you know, did you ever even think about what was going to be required of you once you made that decision? Because as we know that even at your age now, you're still from Bassett. Yeah. You're going to always be from Bassett. At 12 years old, did you realize that, hey, I'm making a decision that is going to affect the rest of your life? You didn't realize that, am I right? Uh, I mean, at that age, I don't think anybody really realizes what their future is, but I mean, I knew what was required of me because my older brothers were already getting into fights, going to youth authority, you know. So I, I just figured it was part of life. It was part of life, you know. It's just part of growing up in the neighborhood, you know. And what was required of you? You had to put work in. You had to put work. Back then, this is like 74. And back then, it was more uh, get out of the car and get down, you know. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, it was tougher then. It's just crazier now. Tough for them back then. What I mean by that is, you know, you had to get out of the car. It takes webbles to get out of the car, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, because you don't know what's gonna happen. You know, it was back then it was a 50-50 chance they pull out a cuete, but you're gonna get down till 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 death, you know what I mean? Yeah. So so you know, I see my brothers always getting in fights and, and coming back busted up, but they came back. So obviously they won, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of, as you said, about about straps. Um, what was the first age that, that you actually had a firearm? You know what? You know what, Vince? I, I really wasn't into cuetes. Simone. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't want to really say much names, but my, my older brother, 
he did 35 years straight for a double homicide, you know, and, and, and with my older ones, they had cuetes. I just wasn't into guns, boy. I just didn't, you know, and, and they weren't even really into guns. We were all involved in boxing at Bassett Park. Yeah. So it was like, you had to get them up, bro. But my thing just wasn't cuetes. Eh? I'm, I'm, when I was in junior high, seventh grade, my older brother left his little 25 in the, in his um, dresser. Yeah. So before he woke up, I picked up the gun. I took it to school. Oh, wow. And I remember the whole day I was like, I hope, I hope the other side, you know, yeah. Puente, Flores, Baum Park. And no disrespect to them, you know, because yeah. I'm sure there was a bunch of us, a bunch of them like me, you know. Yeah. Where I'm hoping they'd come by and they'd hope we came by, you know. But thank God nobody came by, you know, because at that moment, my mentality was I'm going to shoot. You know? Yeah, very different. But, but thank God, I, you know that I know of, I've never took in a, another man's life, you know? And isn't that crazy though, Granada, that at that young age, you were willing to. Oh yeah. You were willing to without thinking twice because when we are raised in that environment and that mindset, that's what we're taught. That's what we're driven yeah. into us. Hey, this is what you gotta be. This is what you gotta do. Tell me about your, your childhood, Ray, if you don't mind me. Tell me about your Hifita. Tell me about your Hifito, your family. Well, I mean, you know, that that's pretty much uh, my testimony as far as uh, a kid that was hurting. My mom was married. Uh, <clears throat> my mom was married, like, that I know of six times and, wow. and, and had boyfriends in between. And she was very abusive, very abusive. Abusive you know, how if you don't Oh she you know, you know, back then in the seventies you could beat your kid in the market and nobody would give it a second thought. Yeah. You know? And she didn't hold back. And as I got older, from coming out of juvenile hall and stuff, when she seen that she couldn't physically hurt me, then she belittled me, she embarrassed me. One time in the seventh grade, uh, she told me to come home after school and I didn't come home. So I'm walking down the street with like 10, 15 girls from from Torch Junior High and like 10 homeboys. She came up in the car, man, and again, she couldn't physically hurt me, but she got out of the car with a belt and just started beating me in front of everybody. In front of everybody. And now, mind you, it did hurt, but because, you know, I'm trying to be a homie, I just yeah. try to giggle, and, and the more I giggle, the more she whipped me, the more she whipped me. And, and it stuck in my mind because it embarrassed me. You know? and yeah, she she followed through what she said, you know. Humiliating. It's she humiliating. humiliated me, you know, and um, yeah. that's how she controlled us. Yeah. You know I mean, she controlled us like that. And, but but by my biggest hurt of my mom is, um, you know, I, I as a Christian now I, I I I thank God for her. You know, she she asked for forgiveness prior to her death, but um, she's very promiscuous. Why she would leave the door open when she was with these men, and I see wow. this and as a little that's boy. Heavy. That's heavy. As a little boy, a boy doesn't need to see his mom do that. You know what I mean? And um, and then yeah. after these men would leave. She'd come out and beat us and say, I got to do that because of you guys. Wow. So, so it just caused a lot of resentment. You know what I mean? So you're, you're telling me that, man, uh, that's, uh, you know what? Um, and it gives yeah. you a, a ugly way of thinking of women as well. Yeah. You know? And, and, yeah. and uh, that hurt a lot, you know? But jumping back to three years ago, um, she was on her deathbed. And I wouldn't really visit her. I didn't, I can't say I was resentful towards her. I just like stood away from her. But my wife, Arlene, beautiful Christian woman, she said, you know what, babes, you're a Christian. You need to go visit her. You know, you need to go make amends with her. And I just like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But, you know, conviction as a Christian, you know, you can't come to God if you're hating somebody, you know? Yeah. But, you know, I broke down and I went to go visit her, you know? And she was on her deathbed and very prideful woman. All these years, she never apologized, never, she just didn't say nothing. But on her deathbed, boy, as God is my witness, my, my son was with me. I just said, hey, mom, you know, how you doing? And, you know, you, know. And she, you could obviously see she was dying. She was yeah. really emancipated. Is that, yeah. is that what you call yeah. it? In the real, like, bones. 92 years old. And she just said, hey, Mio, I'm, I'm sorry for being a bad mother. You don't know how much that mining she never apologized and when she said that it's just like wow 
And I said, you know what, mom, it's okay. I love you. And, and you're going to go home and be with God because she did become a Christian. Yeah. But for her to apologize to me, it just took a whole weight off my, my shoulder, my heart. And you know what? I know she's with God. I know she's with God and I do forgive her. And I, I ask her for forgiveness as well. Cause you know, through all that, I wasn't a good kid as well. You know, yeah. I was constantly in and out of juvenile hall. And I used to back talk. And again, because she was a tiny woman. Yeah. I was 5'10 at seventh grade. I used to back talk a lot. And yeah. after she embarrassed me that one time, I just back talked that much more. More. But you know, that was my that was that was when she apologized, bro. I just like God is good, you know. It just lift the whole weight off my shoulder. You know, um as as you said, I, I, I can't even I can't comprehend watching my Efita, you know be intimate, you know, with, with men where I'm able to see it. That's heavy. I didn't know that, you know, that you didn't share that with me. Um, but now that I do know that, what exactly, and I want to know, Kanan, you know, what exactly did you feel after, you know, your, your Efita, after, man, af after seeing your Efita be intimate with these men and then come out and beat you, how did that, how did that, what did that do to you? I, in your heart man what did that what kind of individual did that make you what i mean talk to me can i what did what ran through you you know at the time just confusion um hurt hate i i hated her for doing that and my sister seen it as well and <sighs> and you know what it, it still i wasn't treated the worst my i had an older sister mary esther and, and she just initially used to just beat her you know Wow. But um, just a lot of confusion, a lot of hurt. In my opinion, at the time, every woman was a liar, a cheater, a whore. So would you say that because of your childhood, it helped make, because I'm sure seeing that and going through that, it put a lot of anger in your heart. I know it had to have put anger in your heart. Would, would you say that, is that what helped fuel you to be a part of your barrio? be able to make, put in work that much easier, be able to hurt someone else because of the hurt that you were going through as a child? Uh, at the time, I probably, I don't think so. You know, I, if anything, I got into the body because of my brothers. You yeah. Know, I wanted to be like them, you know, because we were involved in boxing all my life. Um, yeah. In the seventies, the tough guy had a lot of respect in the street. Yeah. As to nowadays, it's, it's uh, how many guys you killed, but, my my older brother Willie Gumby was just a, a notorious fist fighter, you know, yeah. in the neighborhood in the streets. So you know, I really looked up to him. And but as far as I, I don't I don't remember that. I just know I wanted to stay away from my mom. You know. Yeah. How long? How many years did it go that you didn't talk to your mom? Um, God, like fifteen years ago, I didn't wow. talk to her. But but by you, I, I every now and then I call just to hey what's up you know, but there was no love between us you know, and she never she was very prideful so she never apologized or anything you know. Wow. But uh, not until her deathbed. Not until her deathbed, bro. Not until her deathbed, and that was like that that let me know that God really touched her heart. For her to say that probably took everything you know. Yeah, yeah. And I do forgive her, and, and I hope she forgives me for being a, you know, but um. I know she's with God. Yeah? I know she's with God, you know, because she made she made it right. You know, how, how old were you when you first got incarcerated? Uh, I went to juvenile home when I was 12, a couple of days after I got jumped in. <clears throat> what did but, you get in? What did you get uh, picked up for? We, we were going to we we're going to Puente in a stolen car. Right? We were to go gangbang. So we all went to Central Juvenile Hall. And, yeah, the whole, that was a wake up call too, bro. wake up call. Yeah, because I, I don't know how it is in your barrio, yeah. but in our barrio, it's Bassett, it's Puente, Monte Flores, and Baldwin Park, both sides of Baldwin Park, and we don't go to school with each other. Yeah. So when we see each other, it's on, bro. It's on. There, there's no, because uh, I know some of the East LA barrios, and, and not disrespecting them, yeah. but they'd go to school with each other. Yeah. So there was time to like, you know what, I'll catch you later. Yes. Yeah, so to actually see somebody from the other barrio, it was just like, you got to fight. It's almost like the joint now. Yes, you got a green light. As soon as that gate opens, bro, it's I on. got attacked. Man. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, 
when we see them and they'd see us, it was on, bro. And mind you, those varios get along with each other. Yes. And they they hated us. And so it, it was we were constantly getting it from all sides. And how how many years did you uh, do behind behind bars, including juvie and including state prison? How, how uh, many total? Fourteen years. Wow. Thirteen, fourteen years. Um, I have it inked up on on my here the years, but um, from McLaren Hall, Juvenile Hall, County Camp, Youth Authority, and then the joint. I did two terms in the joint. For what? What were you incarcerated for? Uh, armed robbery and assault. We got down right here at Whittier Boulevard with some guys from Puente, and I don't know how the armed robbery came in there, but we got assault. But uh, all my stuff's all gang stuff. You know? Yeah. All gang stuff. At, at any point in your life, for now, um, was um, was there ever any attempt on your life? Oh, there was many t attempts, you know, in the neighborhood. They were always doing shootings. and But uh, a righteous one-on-one -on -one attempt is uh, I was in Soledad. I went to Soledad. I got transferred from Chino, Cent uh, Chino Central. And I'm not going to say no name, but a big homie told me, hey, this guy in your next cell is no good. He goes, Popeye. He said it right in front of the dude. Hey, Popeye, when you get to, to Hatchby, when this, when this guy, when you get there, you make sure you tell the big homeboy this guy's no good. And, you know, the guy's standing right there in yeah. the other cell just looking at me. You know, I didn't know him from – that's the first time I seen him. Right? Yeah. He got shipped out to Tatchby like on a Monday. I got shipped out to Tatchby like on a Wednesday. So I get to Tatchby, man. I said solid that, but it was Tatchby. Yeah. And – uh. I walk out, I get my, my bedroll, and I walk out to the yard. They, they tell me where to go. And the first person I see is that guy. It's him. So, you know, I just look at him. He looks at me. He's with the gang of Atos, though. And apparently now, figuring out days later what happened, they told him, you need to get him before he gets to the big homeboy and, tell, and pulls your covers in. And that's exactly what he did. So I'm walking to the thing. And I see him creeping up on me, and I turn around, man, and he, he hits me with a welding rod in my back of my neck. Oh, and, man. And then he got me another time in my elbow. Man. <sighs> so we just start getting him up, and he ran off. You know what I mean? And I'm like, whoa, this dude just booked me. Now, mind you, I had did four years in YTS. Yeah. And back then, YTS was like the Pelican Bay of, yeah. of Youth Authority. It was just it, – it was – hey, Holmes, you had to get him up every day there. And, and, and we had a gang of enemies there. But – I'm used to fist fighting, you know, yeah. somebody trying to kill you. me. But uh, Smokey from Pomona 12th Street was a big homeboy there. He passed away, may he rest in peace. He comes up to me, hey, what's up? I said, you know, what are you starting trouble on my yard for? You know, you just got here. I go, hey, man, I was told to tell you this guy's no good. Apparently, he hit me before I could get to you. And um, so those guys, when I guess their shot caller or their lead guy came up to Smokey. Smokey says, hey, what do you want to do, Popeye? So I, I want to get down with him, man. Yeah. And what I meant by getting down is getting them up, yeah. you know, chucking them, man. And Smokey straight out told me, this ain't YA, I yes, said. Yes. You want, you want to get them, you, you get down yeah. with them, man. So it was a reality check because I realized uh, I'm with the big boys now, you know. And how did it feel? How did it make you feel, Karna, that that your life was, that they tried to kill you, man? You know, your life was, did that, I mean, did, did you, I mean, at that point in your life, did you even, was there any kind of, or not even an inclination of, of even a wake-up call yet? Or did yeah. you even say nothing yet, huh? You were still in that darkness. Yeah, you I were was still, still in that, was 19, that mindset. I was 19. I just, I hadn't even been out a year from youth authority. So my, my main thing is, you know, just yeah. to let you know how it is, the bell rang for us to go into yeah. our modules. And uh, I went into a module. I haven't even met the guys on my tier yet. And Midget from Radio Nuevo was running the show there. And he straight out comes up to me. And if you don't take care of business tomorrow, you got to lock it up. Yeah. And I said, hey, I ain't locking nothing up. That's right. You know, I'm from Big Bassett. And, and you know, I'm going to get mine, eh? Mind you, through the night, my neck swelled up like that, bro. Well, yeah. And I either had a choice to go up to the man and say, hey, get me to the hospital and, and deal with locking it up. Or deal with it in the morning. I chose, you know, to toot my own horn. I knew yeah. I had to deal with my brothers. Yeah. If I locked it up, 
and I knew I had to deal with my own boys. And there was, you know, again, to toot my own horn, I, I didn't give it a second thought. I go, I'm going to get this guy in the morning. And uh, crazy enough, the dude was waiting for me in the morning, and, and I got him. I hit him good. Thank God, I don't think, I know for a fact I didn't kill him, but I put major damage on him. I hit him three times with a, a damn sword. Eh? Wow. And um, that night, uh, the dude midget from Mario Nuevo, he was working in the medical and got me a tetanus shot, and they gave me a tetanus shot. So, you know, thank God I, re I recovered. But all that did was light a fire under my butt yeah. because – a couple okay. of days later, I walked out in the yard and I had this ultimate yeah. respect. You had, you felt like, yeah, yeah. I like, wow. You know what I mean? Exactly. Everybody was like, what's up, Popeye? You got down, you know? And it, it didn't calm me down. It just lit me. It lifted you. It, exactly. it made me feel like, oh man, this is awesome. Man. That's what happened. Huh? And now I was amongst, there's always a little groups. I used to nickname them. There's, there's true soldiers. Simone. And you know who we all listen yeah. to in there? True soldiers. Then you have the throwaways. They're just all muscle, no brain. Yeah. Then you have the first stringers, and then you have throw, you know, just dump trucks. Yeah. Well, I was a true soldier. Wow. I, I ran with the true soldiers, and I, every day I became more and more aggressive. You know, back then it was a lot of north south. So as soon as the Norteño came yeah. in the yard, we'd hit him, bro. Get him. We'd hit him with no questions asked. Well, this is going to be a Sureño yard, you know? Let me ask you, Colonel, um, through through the course of your life, do you do you have any regrets, Karnan? Do you have any regrets as, as you are at you know your age now today? Do you, is there anything that comes in your head and say, man? You know, uh, I guess my biggest regret is um, how can I say is just being a a bad father to my first three kids. Why do you say you were a bad father? Because I was very abusive to their mom, very abusive physically. And, and I was unfaithful. I mean, every chance I got. Yeah. And I just thought, and that was being wrong to my daughters, to my son. So your kids saw this. Oh, your yeah. kids saw everything. And, and I, I literally would tell my son in front of his mom, there ain't nothing wrong with you getting something on the side as long as you take care of business. I just yeah. had that stupid mentality. And, and unfortunately, my daughter's seen that, you know. But by the grace of God, jumping ahead now, I met my wife, Arlene, and she won't put up none of that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and she's, uh, God is good, bro, because yeah. uh, she's dropped dead gorgeous and she just, she's the boss, man. She's the boss. I mean, uh, I might be the leader and, and and I might be the, how do I say, the man of the house, but she she holds a tight ship, you know, and, and I love her and I respect her, man. And shout out to you, Arlene, you know what I'm saying, for my yeah, baby doll. It, she would have been it, here, babe, but she had to get her nails done, her hair done. Oh, you know, she had to get her. all dolled up. She had to get all dolled But I always tell her, babe, you're naturally beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if you see her on my Instagram, she's gorgeous, man. Right so on. I got blessed. Well, man. congratulations, girl. Yeah, I'm happy man. for you. And, and you know what? It, it shows it shows the type of man that you are today. Because as you, as you said that you were a man that, you know, didn't hesitate to jump when you had to jump. You weren't a man that has, didn't hesitate to, you know what, put down his, his foot in the house, you know what I'm saying? Whether, you know, if the kids were there or not, you weren't gonna take any kind of disrespect from any female or any man. It, and for you to say, hey, you know what? She's the boss, she's the one that runs things. That shows humility. That shows what God can do. Yeah, God says, treat your wife as, as uh, God treats the church, you know. Exactly, exactly. And as far as the fighting, bro, I, I look back now, it wasn't so much that I was a good fighter. It's just that I was willing to fight at the drop of a dime because of through the boxing and my brothers. I mean, even when we were young, fighting amongst homeboys, we were encouraged to fight with homeboys. Yeah. You know how it is. Of course we, I do. I know people's the yeah. same way, homeboys. When you're at a party, you got an issue with a homeboy, get them up, homes. Go, yeah. go get them up. And everybody, and when it got too rough, then yeah. they break it up. Yes, but they encourage us to get them to get down, you know? And because when we went to YA, bro, again, man, uh, Puente was deep, bro. They're a big body one. And Flores is deep. Ball and Parker deep. And they, they had a, a few guys that could chuck them too, bro. 
you know, but um, well, so's Bassett on me. Yeah, yeah. You, but we're a small body almost compared to them, man. Eh? About ten years ago, they had a a gang injunction. Yeah. So they send out all these gang injunctions to all of us. Yeah. And they said Puente had like a thousand members. Uh, Flores had like eight eight hundred members. Ballon Park had four hundred members. Both sides of Ballon Park. And then they said Bassett three hundred and fifty. I thought to myself, are they counting the dead ones, eh? Because I never seen like 350 old ones. <laughs> right? But we've always been a, a small a neighbor, one. man. Yeah. But N heavily politically involved. There's, yeah. There's, yeah. I ain't going to say no name. There's three big homeboys, you know? I, I was going to ask you, um, you know, speaking about, as you were saying, that you've never been afraid to get them up. Not too long ago, I know that you actually oh, got okay. into a fight on the yeah. street. Tell me about that. I, I don't know if it's a golden gloves or the the one the one in the oh the, there's a few of them yeah I know the one on the street that you got in a fight on the street you know yeah. what I'm talking about yeah. it was there was it was, was, it was it? On 91 freeway bro yeah this they I guess I don't know it was a road rage on huh? yeah three o'clock in that. the afternoon and some big wet old neo Nazi dude eh? I don't know he had something up his butt on huh? but he just he followed me to the gas station I like when he got out of the truck bro. This guy was a ripped youngster, um, and you could tell in his eyes he had ready. total confidence, you know. Yeah. And I just told him, "Hey, bro, I'm at work. You got to chill out." And he just came at me, bro. And I, I ain't gonna lie, um, I was fighting for my life, um, but thank God it, it's not that he couldn't fight. I just fought better, but I, I won. I won, you know. To toot my own horn, the the people that were watching were saying, "Hey, bro, that's the best fist fight I ever seen," because you know I was boxing and he was just throwing like a wild man. Bro. Yeah. I just kept working them and working them, man. Finally, I got him down, man. Boxing uh, and, yeah. and MMA, it, it, it comes yeah. in. But he dropped me, Holmes. He dropped me. I ain't going to lie. He dropped me and uh, he got me like in a in a guillotine headlock. Yeah. And I was like, I, I ain't going to lie, bro. He, I figured it was over. And I figured if he knocks me out, you know, takes my win, he's going to beat me to death. And, yeah. and everybody's watching on the freeway, bro. Yeah. Nobody wants to stop it. Yeah. And I literally yelled out, stop him. Stop him. And nobody wanted to stop him, man. I just said, you know what, God, don't let this guy beat me to death. I go, give me the strength to get out of this. And somehow I got his arm off of me and I just stepped back and I said, I'm going to throw everything I got with a three punch combination. I hit him, Bob, 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 and dropped him, man. Wow. Thank God he just got up and walked away, bro. But it's all caught on film. It was caught on the gas station, caught it on film. And, uh, and you know what? And everybody you said like, hey, bro, that was a awesome fist fight I go what the hell man why didn't you stop me man? you, you know what me. it's years ago i am um, i got jumped in whittier and um i usually don't talk about my life on the show you know what i'm saying because since i host the show i don't talk too much i, I don't go in depth too much about myself but the only reason why i mention it is because you're right and i'm over here fighting three dudes and they had a they had a baseball bat and i'm fighting for my life yeah and nobody helps him. Nobody helps. You could die right there, Holmes, and they'll just be like, Phew. so you're right. At, at the end of the day, it's really just your own self mm -hmm. and God, homie, because there ain't no one going to help Holmes. But as much as we'd like to think that we live in a society that, oh, well, you know what? Let's help this guy. He's being not. It ain't yeah. going to happen, Holmes. It ain't going to happen, you know? And um, so. And the other incident was the Golden Gloves. Yeah. Tell me about that. Too. Uh, you know, my son, Adrian, he's a professional fighter now. You know, Shout you out to wanna, you, Adrian. You guys want to follow him, Adrian Corona, uh, or Only Hands. Okay. He um, he was fighting the Golden Gloves, a very prestige amateur. Yeah. Uh, he was 17, and the kid he was fighting was 24. And, and you know, if you know about boxing and yeah. MMA, there's a man strength. Of course. And a kid strength. Of course. And I just said, hey, that guy's too old for him, you know? Hey, those are the rules. I said, you know what, Emil? Just fight. You know, just so you could get the golden gloves patch. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, Adrian won two of the three rounds. Yeah. But it was it was just back and forth. But Adrian was the better boxer. When the third round, third bell rang and the fight was over, the the kid went over to 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 hit Adrian. Adrian thought it was good. He was gonna hit, so he went to hit and he did hit him. And the referee couldn't stop him. And the, the kid ran over. Mind you, he was a black dude. 24 yeah. years old, but it wasn't a racial thing. They just start fighting, bro. Yeah. As they were fighting, the referee couldn't stop the fight. This is after the bell rang. Yeah. I seen, I found out later it was his two brothers, 
jumping in the ring. And you and me both know when they're yeah. jumping in, they're not jumping in to, no, to stop man. it. They're jumping in to attack Dude, my That's son. right. That's right. So I jumped in, bro, and, and the fight was on. And the crazy part about it is um, there was, must have been maybe 50 African Americans there. And I really, truly think it, it wasn't racial. And this was at Elysian Park, eh? Yeah. It wasn't racial, but they congregated together. Even though they didn't know each other, they congregated together in defense because there was so much raza there. Yeah. But mind you, uh, thank God it ended the way it ended. Nobody got hurt. But they, they were hitting us with chairs and everything. Everything. Bro. I saw the video of everything got, flying got, all over the place. I got suspended for a year. I almost lost my license bro, as a referee. You know? Wow. So, yeah, that was, uh, thank God, you know, but after the fight was over, some bottles from Eastside Clover were playing handball outside, and they came in. They say, hey, home, let's, let's do it. And I go, you know what? Thank you, but no thank you, bro. Just squash it right now, you know? So, yeah. by the grace of God, everything was cool. My brother Rummy was there, and another brother from the Teamsters was there. So, thank God, you know, it ended the way it ended, you know? And what we're going to be doing right now is we're going we're gonna to take a ride to your barrio. Yeah. We are going to... We're gonna talk about. I want to show you the, the 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 mural they did on us. Well, That's because cool, right? you are now from, from basically from, while well, you're still even though you're still from Bassett, you're always gonna be, yeah. but an active Bassett gang member, to being a professional boxing referee now, and you've traveled all over the world, and but before we get into that, we're gonna take a ride to your barrio, Bassett Grande, and Ray is gonna take us. Papa Ray is gonna take us. He's going to show us his barrio. He's going to show us his past. He's going to show us into his life. He's going to show us where he's lost homeboys. He's going to show us where he grew up. Here we go. So uh, we're, uh, we're on our way to uh, your barrio. Um, as we're driving over there, can I, and gracias for, you know, for, uh, oh, we see we got little boxing gloves, you know? That's right, that's right. Uh, you know? Um, I want to take you to San Angelo Park. Okay. That's where the, the neighborhood's at, the barrio. Lost, lost a few homeboys there and and took care of business there as well. Eh? But, tell, uh, tell us a story of um, somebody that, you know, that, you know, one of your, your closest homeboys that that is no longer with, around. With all due respect, I don't want to give the other side the credit, Holmes. Yes, yeah, Simon. But, you know, they... There's been a few that's fallen and, and, and gotten fallen coming over there, you know? Yeah. And then I want to toot my own horn and show you the mural that... I, I don't know who this artist is, but he's been going to the, a lot of the other barrios. Yeah. And he's just doing stuff with, with Raza that is, has, I guess, made it, as they say. Yeah. And uh, he did a mural of me and SGV. He put me, my homeboy Toro, who used to be a fighter. I don't know if you know him. And... um. You know Paul Banky, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And Paul Banky did a story on him too. Yeah, shout out to you, Paul. Um, so without giving credit to you know anyone else or you know, is there someone that was we'll, we'll, we'll put it in in this in these in these terms that that you really that is no longer here, that is with God now, that, that you really miss, that, you know, is there anyone that you want to talk about or? I don't want to get so religious, homes, but let's be honest, bro, not everybody goes to heaven. Yes, if that Simone. was the case, it wouldn't be a hell, you know? Yes, Simone. So I'm not going to say that my homeboy didn't go to heaven because I don't know what happened in his last moments of his death. Yeah. But my homeboy Droopy was at the Mickey's Market on Valley there. And he was a pretty boy, homes. A down solid homeboy, but he was a pretty boy. And he's hiding us from some somewhere high, else. Yeah, yeah they, somewhere they, else. They, they called him to the car, and he walked up the car, and about to shot him right in the chest. And, and, um, and uh, I remember him because I must have been like 12, 13 years old when it happened. It had been it happened like 75, 74. And, and they uh, set him up. Yeah, they set him up. Well, they set him up. Man. And yeah, that, that's unfortunate. You know? I had another homeboy told. He was a notorious, and, and this is where I say, with all due respect, he put in a lot of work. So who am I to say, you know what I mean? It came back on him, karma, you know, just yeah. like any of us. 
you know, and he put in a lot of work. And just from a one single drive-by shooting, man, caught him right behind the ear, right there. That's it, right? I'm in, you know. Yeah. But there's been numerous homeboys that have been taken out, as well as the other side got taken out by us, you know. Well, you know, as as speaking of, as you said, not being too religious, but the Bible does clearly say that you know you live by the sword, you die by the sword, you die by the sword. Yeah. You know, um, man. That's, That's why, in my personal life, uh, I never had any really interest of killing anybody. Yeah. When I go gangbang, it wasn't, I'm going to kill them. I just wanted to get down toe-to-toe. -to -toe. My brothers had always thought, this, when you sock somebody up, he's got to see you. Or if he sees you, like, that about to bust me up. You know? Yeah. I'm out the side. And you know what? That hurts more. Yeah. You know what I mean? That hurts more, man. At least it would hurt me, you know yeah, of uh, course. Props to Danny Maya from Rama Puente. Yeah. I got down with him at TS, and he beat me fair and square, bro. I had to see him on the trade line every day. Oh, man. And you know what? I just said, ah. Uh, and it's a trip. Uh, I don't know if you see it on Instagram, the South. It's all about all the neighborhoods, South. Um, oh, the, I know what you're talking Southern, about. The, yeah, Hispanics. Yeah, yes. About, yeah, yeah. And who comes shooting up there? Danny Maya. I even took a still. i like, wow, there's Danny. Eh? Wow. Oh, he beat me fair and square, huh? you know what I mean? And I called him out, eh? you know what I mean? But the way he made me feel, I know I made a few of his own boys feel. Yeah. But that's just part of it. And you know what? I lived on, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he lived on, too. So I, I didn't have no interest in taking his life, though. Yeah. Wow, that's... Uh... And, and some, some youngsters, they feel that's the ultimate gangster is to kill somebody to take you know? somebody's life and you know what to me an ultimate gangster a real gangster gives respect and will go to any extreme to get respect but he'll give it first at least in my days that's the way i was yeah. raised you know i'll give you respect but you will respect me if you don't then we'll we'll take it as far as i have it. to i'll make you respect that's right yeah simone and this is where i say i think in our days the 70s i know i'm a lot older than you it was tougher because if you had a beef, get down with the dude, and it takes levels to fight, bro. Yeah, not of course. everybody's, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And uh, hand to hand combat, you know, nowadays it's like nobody really does that, anymore. nobody does that. And if they know you're a fighter, I'll just shoot you, huh? I'll eliminate you, you know. Uh, I, I always taught my sons walk away at all costs, but they all fought, they are, were all boxers, yeah, and unfortunately. Your kids will do as you do, not as you say. And unfortunately, over the years, they've seen me getting a couple of fist yeah. fights. And that's exactly what my sons have done. And I now I have to tell them, you got to stop. You don't live in my days. In my days, you would have been the ultimate respect. So but you now I got to tell my sons, you got to chill out, man. Yeah. You got to chill out because they know you're a fighter. They know you're a boxer. They're just going to shoot you. They're just going to shoot you, man. Or come back with 10, 15 guys and jump and beat you there. You got to just let it go, you know? You know what I find um, intriguing about what you just said is that, you know, your whole life you've been, you, you've been a fighter. And you actually taught your kids to walk away. That's crazy. That's uh, what, what made you, even though they was well, a parent, they didn't always listen, yeah. but... What made you, you know, try to instill that in your kids? Like, hey, instead of fighting, try to walk away. What made you try to instill that in them? Because I, I, I wouldn't want to see them get hurt. Get hurt, bro. Yeah. And that's why I, I know every father's different, but it amazes me when a, when fathers push their sons into gangs. I just, I never, quick story, and I'll say their names. The yeah. Guates from Eloya Maravilla. Yeah. This is 1981. They, I was 19. They were 19. They became big homies yeah i noticed they didn't talk to their father on the street i mean in the yard they didn't yeah. talk to him so just out of curiosity we're you know i was in that same group we we're just a bunch of soldiers and i straight out and i tell my sons this sto story all the time i i just caught up the courage to step out of line hey homes what's up with your feet and you know what they said f that bottle he's going home we're here forever 
and he made us like this. So why would you want to push your child into yeah. a gang? Why would you want to push your child into being a gangster? That's heavy. You know what I mean? That's I, I just never amazed me. And then there's times I want my son to be a gangster, but he's not going to put work in. Yeah. You know I mean, he's over here. Nah, don't don't take him nowhere. He's not a gangster. Yeah. I mean, there's some people like that too. And again, I'm not a perfect parent, but we should want our children to be better You're than better. us. Why would you want to put them into the the gang world, the gangster world? You know, I, I just don't. I don't see that. You know what? It, and hearing you say that, Karnam, it's that's how I think. I mistakes that I've made, I don't want for my kids. Yeah. And exactly. Not everybody that comes from a lifestyle that we've came from, they don't think like that. They, you know, that's why as you were a second generation gang member, some fathers, some mothers, some people encourage their kids. And what happens to sometimes they, these kids, sometimes their lives are cut short. They're, they're incarcerated for, you know, never coming home. Exactly as you said, what do they say? They were said, F that vato. Why? Because he's going home and they're there for life. And that father or that mother put their son behind yeah. bars for the rest of their life. They initially robbed them yeah. of a life they could have had. They robbed them of a home, of a family, of, of good things that, that we all want for ourselves. And when they do that, Karnan, honestly, it's, it's a shame, man. Yeah, and let me interrupt you. Yeah, cool. This is where my vario starts. That's Flores right there. Yeah. And this is Bassett starts right here. And this is Valley Boulevard. Valley and, Boulevard. And which crush is this? Valley. Well, it goes all the way down. In, this goes all the way into San Gabriel Valley. Huh? Right yeah. here. This is an awesome spot, homie. Taco right. Nazo, eh? Taco Nazo right here. That's right. That's the Bassett spot, homie. Some of the best, best fish, fish tacos, tacos in the world, homie, right there. My, that's why I got to get my golf bladder out. That's you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's for another show. That's right. That's for another <laughs> show. This is uh, San Angelo. So we're cruising. We're going to go to the That's it right now. This, this is the park right here. Right? Yeah. My bad. Let me turn that off. So this is your water right here. Yeah, this is my water right here. San Angelo County Park right here. And there's, there's a Bassett Park as well. It's right across the street from the violin uh, swap meet, the violin yeah. drive-in. We'd always catch vatos there from other vatos going from to the violin. You know? How uh, many juntas do you think uh, oh, took man, place here? Many juntas. Many juntas. Many, many, many. For people that, that don't know what a junta is, uh, what what is that? It's when the, the neighborhood, there's really no bosses, but the big hitters will say, hey, we need to talk. Everybody needs to come to the park. And this is where it would happen. And you had a beef to settle. You just settle in front of everybody, you know? Right here. Right here, brother. Sometimes they cap catch us slipping, you know? Yeah. But usually we we're always ready. That's why they put the fence right there on top of the walls. Yeah, I see that right because there. Because homeboys would just have stuff on the back of the walls, you know? So the cops did that. The county did. This is county. We're county homes. We're not We're not a city like La Puente. We're county. Man, I'm sure during the years, man, you've probably lost countless homeboys here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, it. Either if their lives weren't taken from them, they OD'd. Yeah, um, that happened here too, you know? Of course. I want to show you the... Back in the day, I don't know why the, I guess the Huda's allowed it or the county allowed it, but it's right there in, in my barrio. The whole wall had ba Barrio Base Grande and nobody ever touched it. It's a dead end, but like 15 years ago, man, the county came, painted it over and they wouldn't allow, every time somebody tried to make it up, they put it back up. They paint it over. Paint it over. And But this mural I want to show you, uh, 
I, the guy didn't even tell me. He just, homeboys that said, hey, home, they, they did a mural and they put you in it, eh? Wow. So I was, you know. That must make you feel good, you know, Kuna? I'm humbled by it to say, you know, thank you. and But to see where you God, come God from, don't like pride, so. Of course not. Of course I, I try. Not. I try my hardest to say, hey, it's not me. It's This was God's plan, man. Because the, the one thing God hates is pride, and that's a humble move. Right there. Santa Mariana. Oh, not that street. Oh. Hopefully the mural's still here. There it is, bud. Missed that. Oh wow! Look at that. Wow. Let's get off and uh, and talk about yeah, that real quick. Other side came and autographed already. Yeah, we see that. Make see, as, as you see that, you know, Baste Grande and Flores, their um, their rival neighborhoods. Can we get off real quick? Yeah. Yeah. So this obviously supposed to be me. That is you right there. This is my homeboy Toro. Toro right here. There was another, he's 16 and 0. And then we have another homeboy, Dingo Alvarado. He was like 17 and 1. Both great fighters, bro, in their time, man. Wow. So they're it, younger than me, but I actually looked up to them as fighters, man. They're good, and they're both solid homeboys, man. You see, right here is, uh, this is basically Ray. This is Ray right here. I would like to think I'm better looking than that, Ohm, but you know, hey, it's a Well, cartoon. not by much, Ohm, oh, so, you know. know. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, Ray right here. And when, when, you, when you see this, honestly, I know we talked about it driving over here, but you got to feel good, Kanan. No, you know, I'm to, blessed, To bro, know where, 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 you, where you come from, to know where you've been, Kanan. And, you know, that you're on this wall. You know, you're on this wall. That's something to be proud of, Karnan. Yeah. It is, you know, because you've accomplished a lot, man. You have, you know. And like I said, um, not only myself, but many, many Rasa, we look up to you, homie. Because, man, look at you. You're on a wall. Oh, you've been yes. all over the world. That's a blessing, Karnan. You know? Yeah. And how, how did, when you, when you see yourself on here, I mean, what comes to mind? All glory to God, homies. That's glory right, God. Man. That's right. Oh, glory to God, because who would have thought when I finished my last prison term in Soledad, I, I thought to myself, is this it? Is this all it's going to be? Yeah. You know what I mean? My first son was born, and I was like in awe that my I had a son, and I go, is this what I want for my son, you know? No. And uh, it was struggles, a lot of struggles, you know? What What made you get into referee? How, how, did, how did that... How did that happen, Ray? Being, you know, incarcerated, being, you know what, a very active gang member, being, you know, I mean, having your life almost taken from you. What made, what what clicked that said, hey, you know what, for for this person to come alive? What clicked in Ray's heart and his head that said, you know what? Well, when I knew that boxing was over for me and I wasn't going to be a fighter, yeah, I asked Ben Lira, who's a teacher, great uh, trainer. I go, hey, Ben, I think I want to referee boxing. And you know what? I had to go five years in the amateurs, and I was telling brother here that they wouldn't let me referee either because of the way I look. Yeah. They made it clear it's because of the way you look. And by the grace of God, bro, Marty Dinkin, well, Ben Lira called Marty Dinkin and told him, you know what? This guy wants to be a referee. So for one year, I had to go to training every weekend. You couldn't miss, bro. By the grace of God, bro, they gave me my license. Wow. The rest is history, huh? The rest is history. The rest is history, yeah. Wow. So, you know, again, I just want to end this by telling the kids, if you want to be a gangster, then be a gangster, brother. But you know what? You can't blame nobody but yourself, you know? And if you want to make better choices, whether you're a janitor or a politician, be a good politician. Go to bed at night knowing you put your head on the, on the pillow saying, I did the right thing. Give your life to God, man. And, and, oh, I don't believe in God. Look in the book of Revelations, what's happening now in the world. How yeah. do you explain that, bro? We can yeah. say two plus two ain't two, but it's two. Yeah. You can say, I don't believe in God. Don't believe in God. But whatever is happening in the Bible is happening now. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. But I, I want to thank you again, Holmes, for no, giving me this opportunity. 
No, gracias again. Thank you, know you Lord. Lord. And um, this is this is best. You're gonna walk home from here, right? Yeah, we're gonna walk. Actually, we, if you look at <laughs> the horses, the horses, the horses right there, are right home. there, wrong. We're gonna go get on the horses right now, Holmes. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? We're gonna do it back in the the, the old west days, Holmes. There you go. So right now we're uh, we're driving down Valley Boulevard, who is infamous uh, for the amount of uh, let's just be real, you know, there was a lot of narcotics sold right here, man. A lot Good of time, Holmes. yeah, I know. Holmes. That's a deal right here, man. right here, Holmes. And um, you know, and me being from Pico, I even know that. You know what I'm saying? All right here, Valley Boulevard, Holmes is is infamous. Um. So right now we're headed to uh, Bassett Park, which um, this is where uh, Mickey's liquor. This is where my homeboy group he got killed. Almost. Right here, he got killed right, right here. here in the park. Now they drove up and asked him to come to the car and he got taken out right here. Oh man, that's a shame, man. And what year was that? I think it was seventy-five. Seven. Wow, that was the one where the the highness called him over, right yes. there. Yes. Oh. They called him to the car and he walked up. And he do was laying in the back seat. You know what? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, watch out. Look, 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 check that out, Holmes. Yeah, I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm seeing it all. That's right, Holmes. The Rams, eh? That, that looks like a, uh, uh, a jet. It, it should be a charger. A charger. If it was a charger, did that. A charger huh? did that, <laughs> Charger fan did that, Holmes. For, for those of you, you know, I'm a big Charger fan. And he's a big Rams fan. And so, you know, I think he came and put that Rams up by himself, and uh, so he's blaming us on the, the whole Charger thing. <laughs> Congratulations on your Super Bowl win, by the way. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Enjoy it, because uh, we're going to get it this year. <laughs> awesome competition. I'd rather be a California team. Okay, no? That's right. Yeah, Simone. Um, so uh, we're headed over to a Bassett Park right now. And um, we're uh, during during your life, man. Were uh, what was some of your your struggles? Were you like um, alcohol, narcotics? What was some of the? No, I really um, I didn't really do start doing drugs till like I got out of prison. Man. What was some of your your, your just, drugs of your we just of choice? Coke and speed, almost. Coke and speed. Coke and speed. Coke and speed. Yeah. I was never too much into, you know, I mean, me, smoke yesca, a little bit of PCP back in the day, you the know. Kukui uh, stuff, the kukui stuff. Yeah, yeah a little bit of uh, lovelies for people that don't know what a lovely is. Um, Basically a joint dipped in PCP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Bassett Park, Holmes. Right yeah. here. I'm going to show you the little. Here's Violin Driving. Eh? It's the driving. Toys, eh? Yeah. It was cheap. Why would you get in there for a carload? Why would everybody go deep in the... They put people in the trunk just to get in there. Yeah, you know. But a lot of juntas here. Now, now they have... Uh, during the week, I think it's just only during the week they have the methadone clinic here. So you come... Any time during the week, it just filled with filled, huh? with homies and, and people that are just unfortunately strung out. And I don't look down on them, bro. I just feel bad for them, you know, because it's an ugly, ugly lifestyle. Homes, and it's taking their life, unfortunately, you know. And, and you know what? Because that not... methadone is just as bad as heroin. Homes. Yeah. It's, it still destroys your kidneys, your liver. And unfortunately, being a part of that lifestyle, being raised in that environment unfortunately that's one of the gifts it gives us how many times did you run from the hudas here <laughs> and what was good about this park they can only come in through here so as soon as we see them we could run that way run that way huh run that way quick little story i just just remembered it we were supposed to meet some matos here about some drugs and uh it, it, we're having conflict and, and they go away hey, well let's just meet at the park we'll talk yeah so me and my primo Flo, may mess rest in peace, he passed away. We came here, just meet him during the day, and we met the two vatos from L.A. here. They had a dude standing next to them, just standing over there, and we're talking, and it was kind of heated, but anyways, the Hudas drove up, 
and that dude and, and me and my cousin start running that way. You know, oh. we didn't want the hoodas because we were carrying drugs. Yeah. As we're running that way, the dude that was with them throws a cuete on me. Oh. I'm like, oh, they were going to shoot us. They were going to shoot <laughs> they you were guys. Shoot me, oh. So thank God. The, that's why I say the cops saved our butt, eh? See, that's another story. We taught homeboy a lesson as soon as we jumped over the fence. So. Oh, yeah, homie. You know? Oh, we ripped him up, home. Wow. No, nah, no, nah, I just brought it for protection. Yeah, right. Eh? You're going to gun us down, eh? it, Isn't it crazy? See, that's the whole reason why we get in the car and we drive through the, you know, each person that we're, we, we're blessed to interview and drive through their barrio for stories like that. The stories just come up back They're like, man, I remember this homeboy. I remember this homegirl. I remember this incident. I remember that, you know, it makes us reflect on our life. And, and thank God that, that we're still here, you know? That's right. Um. So, um, right now, uh, as you saw, we just, uh, we're at, we're at Bassett Park right now and, uh, with Popeye Ray. And as I said earlier, you know, that's the whole purpose of this because all the memories come flashing, familia. All the memories, the good, the bad, you know, and um, just you know, thinking about about our lives, and um, you know what? Um, we're gonna be headed back to the house right now and finishing up our interview with Papa Ray. Um, is there anything that uh, before we head back that that as you, as you're sitting here, now right here in, in your barrio, in the heart of your barrio, and you see that you know. Bassett Park, Simon, is there, I mean, anything that that comes to your head right now? Uh, a lot of good memories, a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of good memories, but, you know, it's time to move on. And, and again, all glory to God. And I just want to tell the youngsters, man, think before you think. A lot of better things out there, man. But thank you for having me, homie. No, no, for gracias. Having, homie. Thank you. We're going to head back in. And gracias, homie. You know right, what? And, and and thank you for, uh, you know what, giving this 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 interview, and just um, being a, a positive influence for all our young people, man. Serio, right. I mean that, homie. Thank you. Homie. Gracias likewise, a ti, likewise. homie. Serio, thank you, homie. We're gonna head back now, familia. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, we're back from uh, basically. Uh, Going around Basa Grande, thank you for, for that, Ray, for everything that you showed us. As you go back to your barrio, do the memories just begin to just, I mean. No, I mean, I, I, I love my neighborhood, you know, and um, it's, uh, it always brings back good and bad memories. Good and you know? bad, good and Lost bad. Lost a lot of homeboys, and it, it's really ugly right now. That It's the devil's time, you know, even though God's in control, it's the devil's time, and a lot of politics in the street, homeboys yeah. killing homeboys, and that's yeah. in every barrio. Yeah, that's in is. every barrio. It is homeboys killing homeboys, you know. And um, that that's uh, when I see that now, I, I feel bad, bro. I feel bad, but how does it? Um, how do you? How do you feel now that you're a you know a professional referee, man? Because I'm be honest with you, I am. I'm very honored because. I've, I've been watching you for, for years now, you know, seeing you, man, I I've seen you on, and I don't know how many fights I, I can't count them, how many times I've seen you on television. So I'm very honored that you would sit here and give us this opportunity. Um, you got to referee the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight. Yeah. How was that man to referee Mike Tyson? How was that? You know, well, it, it was an exhibition. I, I mean, I thank God that I got the opportunity to do it. It was only an exhibition. But mind you, when I was in the ring, when I seen Mike Tyson, I don't know if you remember all his fights prior. Yeah. Before the fight, he just walked back and forth and looks across. The yeah. Ring. That's when I actually said, that's Mike Tyson, you know, because he had that same mode. Look. Like, I'm going to get across this ring and kick your butt or bite your ear off, whichever one comes first. Okay. You know, but, but with that said, Mike wanted to fight. And in my opinion, Roy Jones didn't want to fight when, really? he, when he felt, when he felt Mike's power, power. it's like, Whoa, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, he just wanted to hit and hold. And, and one time I actually told Roy Jones, you got to stop holding. And Mike thought I was talking to him. Mike turned around and told me he's the one holding, not me, you know? But it, it was an exhibition. There was no winner, no loser. That's why I couldn't set the tone and say, hey, you keep holding, I'm going to take a point, you know? Yeah. But uh, 
No, it was exciting to, to see uh, Mike Tyson. He was, he was a cool guy, very friendly, you know. And even though it was exhibition, it was still pay per view. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it was. It wasn't like this. Wasn't like they were boxing. In case you didn't know, Thriller uh, put the fight on. It was huge. It got seen by like millions of people. Yeah, it was the highest pay per view yeah. Yeah. at the time. Yeah. I watched it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, man, to see Mike Tyson, you know, Iron Mike, and to see my gente, my raza, in the same ring with him. Thank you know, you. Thank you. it makes us proud. You know, um, and yeah, no, most definitely. So uh, being in there, you know, managing Mike Tyson. Wow, that's uh, that's heavy. Yeah. Um, out of all the fights that you refereed, um, which is uh, the most that 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 you have have the best memory and the the least, you know? Well, you know, I I've refereed a lot of the now champions before they were champions. You know, you know, just uh, I don't want to get too political. I get a lot of big shows. Unfortunately, I don't get the big fights. And why, why, why do you, why do you feel you don't get the big fights, Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's God's will, bro. Yeah. I mean, you know, but it, it is what it is. Like I've talked at juvenile halls, and I tell these kids, you walk like a duck, you talk like a duck. Most likely, you're a duck. So when you get pulled over by the hoodas, you know, just go with the flow, bro. Do as they tell you, you know, because hey, you want to look. You know, I know the way I look. That's just the way I look, you know, and it goes with the territory, you know. I'm not saying it's always right the way the Hudas treat us. Yeah. But at the same time, just do as they ask and, and, and they'll let you go, you know what I mean? But you look like a gangbanger, you're most likely you're a gangbanger, bro. You know what I mean? And it, it's part of the territory, you know. And, and mind you, with that said, my oldest son is a LAPD. He was a gang officer for like 13 years. Now he's in traffic. And I have another son in the military and I, the other three are all good jobs and i have two daughters as well you know and they thank god everything's good you know but um speaking of being a, a gang member and even though you're a referee do you mind if we um can we focus in on a couple of your tats if that's okay you, you, are you i got a skin i got a skin disorder now holmes in my old age yeah i don't know what happened eh? the doctor said it's stress and i turned around and looked at my wife holmes. <laughs> yeah you see <laughs> yeah. you see what you guys that's do right, eh? you know what i'm saying be good to you man, man. Eh? but yeah you know it just um these are all prison stuff man. explain some of that to us if you don't mind just you know in the neighborhood the uh, in the joint that's it, Holmes. You got the Sureño. You got the, I saw Grande Bassi. on my back. Bassi Grande really being in your back. back. Yeah. But yeah, it's the skin disorder is getting. I can't even go in the sun anymore, bro. No. Because it, it uh, you know, I guess it's the Michael Jackson. It's the Michael. The, it's uh, called uh, it's called Vita Ligo or something like that. Vita, something like something it, like yeah. that. I know, but the doctor said it's it comes from stress and from stress. Equally, yeah. then I'm probably gonna get it That's pretty exactly soon. Exactly. Right. Remember that. Um. So. As I was saying is, going back to, you know, even though I was focusing on the tattoos, because of your past, and I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. You don't got to comment on it. You don't got to. But because of your past, Garnan, and because of the way you look, would you say it's fair that maybe you've been passed up on, on opportunities? On maybe, you know, because, hey, let's not put Ray in this fight because sabes que? Look at how he looks. He's 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 brown colored. He's got tacas all over him. Well, the the tattoos don't show in the fights because yeah. everything's long sleeve. But I I don't want to. Oh, feel sorry for me. I, I don't want to do that, bro. But that's a possibility. It's probably a possibility because the commission gives you the fight. The boss Andy Foster, great guy. I got a lot of mad respect. He mind you, in 2016, I was the most worked referee in the world. Most so I, worked referee? Yes. So, so how I, many I title fights have you refereed as the most worked referee? Oh man, only three, brother. Only Why three. only three if you've had the most ref? You know, you got to get Andy Foster on here then for that. But again, he works me, you know what I mean? Andy Foster. There you go. But I, I got nothing but respect for the man, you know, and he, again, I get all the big shows. I just unfortunately don't get the big fights, but you know, I, I like to, you get Even a lot of the undercard fights. Yes. You know, I still get, you know, I'm always on TV. And uh, I just got to give it in God's hands, bro. You know, when, it's, when he thinks I'm 
know what you're, you're ready for this fight, which I know I am, but when he feels it's his time, then, it, then, it, then it'll happen. And if it don't happen, I'm going to keep pumping forward, bro. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and, and again, and if it is because I'm a homie, whose fault is that? That, that, that's mean? heavy, you know what? Whose fault is that? Well, I can't blame nobody for the way I am or the way I look but myself, you know? But at the same time, I'm not going to change my look for nobody either. M my wife always clowns me. I could put you in golf shorts. You're still going to look and walk and talk the way you do. So. And that, that's heavy. You know what? Mm -hmm. Listening to, to Papa Ray and him saying, hey, if I don't get these opportunities in life, I got no one to blame but myself. He's taking you know, he's taking accountability, which many times in life, we don't take accountability. You know, when we end up incarcerated, we say, well, you know what? No, at the end of the, at the end, we, we choose our own life, gente. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. He's going to choose his life. You're going to choose your life. I'm going to choose my life. At the end of the day, life is about choices. He made the choices that got him incarcerated. He made the choices that got, almost got his life taken from him where they stabbed him in the neck trying to kill him. He made these choices, but he also made the choices to say, you know what? I want better in life. I want better, gente, to where he's a referee. And even though, and he travels all over the world, refereed Mike Tyson fights, refereed, I mean, so many countless fights, but still, it's, it's a shame in my opinion, this is just my opinion, that my camarada is getting bypassed on fights because he's got Basse Grande tattooed all over him. Because you know what? Because he is a former inmate. It's a shame. And if I could say something to the youngsters, I've talked at a couple of juvenile halls. And you know what? I, I look back when I'd hear somebody trying to tell me or school me. Some of these youngsters, that, that's their main goal is to be a gangster. Yeah. They, they don't want to hear about no get right, act right. But I just always tell them you like, some, you like to be told what to do, and 99.9 .9 of these gangsters that want to be gangsters that you can't tell them that, I don't like nobody telling you nothing. Well, I always tell you this. When you go to the joint pool, you will listen to somebody there. If it's not the hurras, you're going to listen to the shot caller. And if you don't do as what they say, you're going to be on the list, brother. So if you really don't like to be told what to do, you better start making better choices because when you get to the joint pool, you will listen to the rules, whether you like it or not. So if you feel, hey, I'm going to be a gangster, I'm going to do what I want, I'm going to do, okay. You know what I mean? More power to you, brother. But if you don't, if you want to get a better life, life, at this time and age, you have more opportunities to get right. Get right with God. You have more opportunities to get right in school. Back in the 70s, bro, the, the Rasa was like blackballed almost like the African-Americans. Not as much. But we had the same blocks, the walls that you couldn't get. You know what I mean? So I'm just telling you now, if you don't like to hear, oh, well, I don't like nobody telling me what to do. Believe me, when you go to the joint, bro, you will listen. You will do as they say. So, you know, God's luck, brother. And that's coming from someone that served 14 years behind bars. This isn't someone that, you know what, that went away to camp and, you know what, say, sabes que? He did 14 years of his life that he will never get back, gente. So he's speaking from his core, he's speaking from his heart. He's dropping wisdom. And that's what Barrio Driven is all about. That's right. In hopes that, you know what, that we're gonna help people make better choices. If you could go back in time, Ray, before we leave, and thank you for being on Barrio Driven here today. If you could go back in time, what would you change in life, Karnan? Nothing, bro. I, I, to be honest, nothing. I mean, God had a plan. Yeah. Sometimes you got to, you know, it says in the Bible, we're at our weakest. We're at our strongest when we're at our weakest. Yeah. And you know what? Even though I was living an ungodly life, you know what? I'm here now. Yeah. I thank God for it. There's things I, I wish I didn't do, but it is what it is. I, I made my choices and this is how I learned, you know? I mean, if I had a dream life to live, I literally wanted to be in the military. I, I just like that structure. Yeah. It didn't happen, you know, but where I'm at now, I, I thank God for it. You know, my, my, I have a gorgeous wife, uh, seven kids, six grandkids. And, and you know what? God is good, bro. 
You know, I have my bad days like my good days. It yeah. says in the Bible, not when you when you have trials, not if you have trials. And you know what? You're gonna have trials, bro. You can't have a bad day without a good day. You can't have a good day without bad days. You know what I mean? And we got to, you know, look at look what's happening in the world now, bro. Exactly. You know, the world now is like, I want you to hold yourself accountable, but don't hold me accountable. Yeah. Everybody like, oh, you're treating me like crap, but yet we want the police there when we want them, but then we don't want them there when we don't want them. You wronged me, I lost, now I want to call the cops. You know, in, in my days, in the 70s, bro, you couldn't even call the cops. You yeah. know, that was unheard of. But now you got gangsters, you snitching on other gangsters. Uh, I mean... I don't care if he hears it or not. This guy from the Italian mafia, the what's that? Gotti's right hand man. What's his name again? Um, yeah. You know, he, they're they're praising him, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are we gangsters? Are we not gangsters? Are you a rat? You're not a rat. And I, I can care less either way. Yeah. But if you really want to change the world, you got to talk about the the negative of what you did and where it's got you. But now they're interviewing you, and, and you know what, bro? And, I challenge you to give your life to Christ, bro, because if you continue this lifestyle, it's only going to be bad, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you for and having me, bro. No, thank, thank you. you. And me. isn't it crazy that your son is is in law enforcement now, knowing that you grew up hating the, the law, hating the police, and knowing what your son is now. And I bet you, you couldn't be more prouder. Isn't that crazy yeah. how God is? That That's crazy. Yeah. Knowing that that you hated the Huras growing up, that these are the people well, they, that came and they took saved you. our butts a few times, though, you know, <laughs> getting overwhelmed, beat down, and they come, you know. But now I thank God that that He made right choices. Two tours in Iraq. Oh wow! Infantry, 82nd Airborne. So he he went through the through the fire, and yeah, he became a LAPD. And I think uh, me raising him around the games, you know, he. He, he made him a better gang officer, you know, but I think you were, you know, Ray Corona Jr., man. Huh? Good kid. Wow. Love him. Shout out to you, Ray. Hey, thank you again, All right, Papa Ray. Gracias, gracias for being a part of Barrio Driven. God bless you, gente. God bless, man. We'll see you soon. Stay driven.